Lots of people drink coffee before they go to work. Of course, others, believe it or not, drop acid. It's illegal, but only on Five Tonight. Kate Kogirin on the growing number of Bay Area professionals who say tiny doses of LSD give them the competitive edge they need. In the 60s, a mind blowing experiment called LSD rolled into town. There's nothing you can do about it. My advice is to sit down with your kids and ask them what they're learning, why they take it. An unprecedented number of young people flocked to San Francisco and, thanks to psychedelics, saw the world in a different light. <laughs> 50 years later, San Francisco is still the center of the psychedelic universe. But those who now drop acid and why they do it might surprise you. It's very small. It's a very small amount. They're not hippies. They're tech bros, artists, investors, even entrepreneurs. These are the people um, influencing the world. These are the companies that are reaching far and wide all over. And they're not taking LSD to hallucinate. Definitely not hallucinating. I haven't felt anything that's like any kind of adverse reaction. They're taking a tiny dose, about a tenth of a normal dose, to be more productive and creative. It's called microdosing. People are finding that low dose LSD permits their mind to be a little bit more expansive in terms of problem solving, and yet at the same time, they're able to stay focused. People like Brianna, the 27 year old artist, microdoses to focus more deeply on her work. She says it's better than caffeine. It's a very smooth awake, and I feel focused, and I can take away my distractions easily, much more easily than if I am just normal. <laughs> Veteran software engineer Kevin Herbert says LSD helped him solve some tough technical problems when he was working at Cisco. Software engineering and hardware engineering, incredibly complex. He recently tried microdosing to learn a complicated new computer language. There does appear to be a benefit. But scientific proof is in short supply about both its benefits and dangers. Well, unfortunately, we just don't know enough at this point to say whether microdosing psychedelics like LSD is safe. Brad Burge is with MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. He says in 1966, when LSD was declared illegal, promising research abruptly stopped. So that lack of research means that we can't say for sure uh, whether LSD is going to help in a particular way. But Professor James Fadiman got a glimpse. We were quietly doing this research in Menlo Park. In the 60s, Fadiman conducted pioneering psychedelic research when it was still legal. He recruited volunteers, many in high tech, to take a moderate dose of LSD. There were theoretical physicists, there were chip designers. Each volunteer brought to the session technical problems they could not solve. But after dropping acid, success. We had 48 problems, 44 solutions. In a new research project, Fadiman is collecting reports from hundreds of microdosers from around the world. People report they feel better, they feel more competent. As for Brianna, she's working on an interactive sculpture for the upcoming Burning Man Festival. She says microdosing helped. I would love to see this be legal one day. However, LSD remains classified as a scheduled one drug, considered the most dangerous. And since it's illegal, if you buy it, you may not know what you're getting. In the newsroom, Kate Kogirin, KPIX5. Well, there are a variety of methods to distribute the drug, but most commonly it's found diluted in liquid in dropper bottles. But again, experts warn no one knows what dose is actually safe.